Yes, hello to all. Um, um, happy to see you in this cafe uh, together with uh, Yanis uh, Giocas. Uh, Ani, um, Maria, Anna, there you are, Ani. Pleasure to see you <laughs> and uh, with Chris. Um, actually, uh, Yanis and I will be hosts uh, tonight, actually, hosts of this cafe, like more innkeepers for today. So, this will not be um, a lecture. Um, I'm explaining this for the people that have may not participated in previous cafes, uh, but you are all very much invited to talk about your practices, uh, your uh, approaches, um, uh, your visions on the topic of tonight. Um, it's an open conversation. Uh, you can stay as long as uh, the cafe is open. The cafe will be open as long there is one man or woman standing and talking. So you can leave whenever you uh, uh, you wish, and you can come in whenever you wish. So um, we'll start with inviting uh, our uh, speakers, our guest speakers of tonight, um, Annie, uh, Chris, and Aspasia, uh, to give us a provocation. The provocation is more to introduce them in the work they did uh, in Prespas. Uh, Prespes, as many of you may know, and many of you were there, as I can see, uh, was uh, not only a an, an walking encounters uh, conference, but uh, had foreseen as well a year of stepping back. Um, we organize it every two years. And it, it, this year that is not happening, it is happening a lot, uh, because we uh, want to foresee this year to process everything that has happened in uh, the conference. Um, and for that, uh, we uh, the a pillar of, of the event was documenting very thoroughly on various manners what happened uh, in this event. And many of the working artists that came were like surprised to see that uh, there were like 50 people with cameras uh, walking around uh, and uh, Chris uh, making a documentary. So this merged, this make this documenting merged and and and, and uh, interacted, intersected completely with the process of, of walking and give it an, an uh, even another level. I'm a bit, um, maybe a strange bird in this conversation, although I, and uh, together with Yanis, I was uh, the co-coordinator uh, of the event, because many of my work as a walking artist is unseen. Uh, for me, um, um, intentionally, I do not document uh, my work. Um, many of the works I do, nobody even hears about them. Um, they are just happening. Uh, in group or, or alone. So um, I think these two perspectives uh, may bring in a dynamics in our conversation about uh, walking, how to walk, docu how to document walking, um, and uh, as well about the question, is it even necessary to walk, to document uh, walking, because by its nature, it's something that uh, passes by. Um, so, uh, Yanis, would you like to tell something and to introduce the people that will uh, talk tonight in some lines? Uh, thanks, Gert. Thanks, Baba, for the hospitality and the mm -hmm. uh, way you organize these uh, very interesting cafes and very stimulating. Uh, uh, this uh, com we have had many discussions considering the, what happened in Prespes and what will occur in Prespa the next, um, uh, in actually in less in 90 days from now. <laughs> and uh, the, 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 this question, which is very open and very strong and very, in a way it cannot be answered, <laughs> but it is one of these questions that need to be discussed and uh, contemplated all the time is uh, what happens not only with watching art, which by itself is an ephemeral work, and uh, something that uh, happens and then disappears and does not have a substance of uh, something concrete that stays but by its nature, but also in general about how, what, what is the concept of recording an artwork, what is about uh, the concept of recording an experience, and, uh, and uh, that is related to art. So what was uh, the, the approach that we followed in this, uh, uh, in this encounters conference 
uh, which took place two years ago in Prespa in uh, the late uh, early July, late June, was that we will uh, record uh, uh, everything that was possible, so to say. That was the decision that we deliberately took, unless if the artists who did not want their artwork to be recorded. We did not have any objections to that from any. And so there were uh, various kinds of recordings. There was, uh, first of all, the recording that was happening uh, uh, in an imp imp improvisational way from the fact that in contemporary world, many people have cameras with their cell phones or even professional cameras and all that, which was not uh, so granted the previous uh, time, the previous years. The second was that uh, we uh, we asked, uh, and it was more or less something like a volunteer, I will elaborate on the concept later, uh, students and graduates from, of, from our school, if they wish to take a camera from the cameras that we have in the school equipment and record uh, uh, the events that they were following. So the recordings that you see in the YouTube channel is not from, uh, uh, it, it is from art majors, but not specialized in recording. And actually some of them, it was the first time that the, they were recording systematically an event. So there is a lot of, because it was necessary due to the amount of the projects that were taking place. A third uh, recording was, uh, the documentary film that Christos Ioannidis has created, and we will see. Ah, and I have to say, yes, the, third. the fourth recording was from the archive of all the recordings of the stu students and the graduates and of the workshops. Anit Maria, that if you will talk later, created three to four minutes videos, something like uh, trying to bring uh, uh, the essence of what uh, either she experienced or she understood from the uh, material that she had. So that was the fourth. The fifth way of recording was the volume. We have uh, something like 700 page, uh, 600 page volume of the events, the text, the essays that is uh, available and you can read it if you want and get an idea of that. And then next to all this, uh, there is, of course, the mnemonic recording, the mnemonic recording, what we remember of these events, all those who participated, and even from those who have not seen it after having made all this presentation, how these things are remembered, how these things are interpreted, how all these uh, events are being uh, even reconstructed in a way. So this is more or less uh, the framework. And uh, this brings out what uh, has uh, very well said uh, uh, Gert, uh, this concept of uh, should we record or not, and if we record, what are the issues, and if we don't record, what are the issues. So I would like to present now the three of my colleagues who worked in that process, who are uh, Annie Tsevdomaria, who is a video artist and she edited the films that were made uh, during the, that, docu that, doc that created, that documented uh, the, the workshops. Uh, Christos Ioannidis, who made a one hour uh, documentary film, which is ready and will be launched in several uh, venues uh, the next uh, time period. And uh, Aspasia Vuduri, who is a graphic designer, who made, uh, and a PhD candidate in our university, who made the volume, uh, which is, I think, also not just, uh, which is not, we cannot say, it is not only about the graphic design of what we see, but also a comment of how we interpret what in art in a volume uh, uh, of that uh, size, and scale, and that. So this is uh, because we consider PRESPA, what we do in PRESPA is an open laboratory so we are very much in, uh, in a constantly open dialogue that will enrich, will change, will uh, uh, challenge what we are doing and will bring uh, the next applications of that uh, 
a process which take place in one way or another in this area since 2007. So it's already 16 years of implementation. From the first uh, painting workshop of the School of Visual Arts uh, of the University of Western Macedonia. So we are a public university that we are doing all this exploration of a place via watching. So I hope that uh, that was a little bit, I wanted to give the framework. And I would like to give uh, the floor, let's say, to Annie Tsevdomaria, who could start uh, with her uh, uh, approach to this uh, question via her practice. Uh, hello again. Thank you very much for having me. Um, uh, as uh, Mr. Giorgio said, the methodology was very simple because uh, everyone that recorded the workshops uh, weren't really experienced in the area of documenting via video um, performances, uh, even myself, even though uh, I studied uh, film. Um, uh, I had to say, though, that the biggest challenge for me was indeed to edit this material uh, because uh, first I had to decide if uh, I should keep the material uh, raw and very simple or maybe follow my personal aesthetic uh, in editing. Uh, I quickly decided that it should be raw and true to the events that happened uh, in press but uh, even though I decided that, uh, when you try to edit something, you make choices. So it's pretty easy to um, uh, give your own personal view somehow. And uh, it's also all, already in another uh, person's personal view, the one that documented it. Uh, an example of that is that you can hear the uh, videographer's uh, breath and also his or her steps. Uh, I mention that because uh, it creates the soundscape of the video. It's very close to the microphone, so it immediately somehow creates a different uh, or maybe very close to the reality uh, of the soundscape. Um, I don't know. Uh, the answer is if we should document it or not. Uh, I think we should because we do not only create an archive, but we also have another product in our hands that uh, is a different, um, how to say it? Uh, it's, you can see it uh, as an art piece itself. Uh, I have two examples. I have uh, a video I can show from a workshop that it's uh, raw. And also I have another video which is uh, kind of a trailer of uh, some of the workshops uh, that was inspired from something Mr. Giorgas has said to me mm -hmm. in the past um, about all the, all the different works uh, that happening at the same time. So uh, I chose this specific uh, video because I think the documentation is already happening in the performance uh, because the people that are participate, participating in it um, are choosing items to put in a working library. So I think uh, it's already um, a theme for the workshops, a question maybe. I can share uh, the other video if I have time. If I don't, I can just uh, send the link in a while and uh, anyone can watch it uh, later. Yes, thank, thank you, you, Annie. The Ani edited uh, something like around 40 films that you can see in the YouTube channel. So Christos Ioannidis is a 
a visual artist and a film director. Thank, uh, thank you, Yanis, Gert, and Babak for the invitation. Hello to everyone. I'm uh, Chris Yanidis. I'm a director and a landscape photographer, and uh, I work a lot. I have uh, wondered many times if I if the walking is a simple process or uh, an uh, artistic practice. When I learned about the first uh, walking art conference in Prespes, I felt that uh, it would be a unique opportunity not only to observe the artists performing, but uh, also to decode the artistic pra practice to the general public. Uh, I can show you some snapshots from the from the video, from the film. I, I wanted to capture uh, work of walking art, to wonder about its nature, to record the variety of its forms and needs, to talk uh, to the artist and to ask some basic questions that concern it, such as uh, what is a walking art? What is a workshop? Does produce a piece of art? Uh, what is the notion of the body? Who is, uh, how is the connected to the historical and social context, if it's in an act of resistance, can be an individual act, who is the audience, how effective it is, and working as art. So, uh, it's not a documentary about uh, the history of uh, variations of working art. It doesn't cover every aspect of uh, working art. It's a documentary about that specific place and time. It's not a documentary of observation, although I would uh, love to just follow the artist. For me, it was very important to conversate with them. And it is uh, an expl explanatory side of the white audience. The music is uh, by Thanasis Volas. And uh, I would like to, to share with you uh, one uh, link uh, from the intro and uh, one other link for the part of uh, uh, um, what is a, a workshop. So this is the intro and uh, the next one is the what is a workshop? Okay, thank you very much, Christos. Yes, I think that this gave us a good idea or a first good idea about Christos' uh, film, and you can watch it. So, Aspasia, can you introduce us a little bit to the way the book was created? A little bit, I will try. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Yogas, Gert and uh, Babak for this uh, small presentation. I, will, uh, I think you can hear me and uh, I will try to share my screen. In a few minutes, I'll try to describe a little bit uh, this project. Uh, it's a printed uh, documentation. Uh, maybe this uh, material is uh, memory and history, and in a few years, maybe should be a history of art, uh, and not only. Um, this book is uh, an aesthetic document of more than 50, 550 pages, contextualizing the conference working art, working practices, working bodies, proceedings. It's not an, um, a normal pro proceeding book. Uh, it's um, like an art book, like an album. It includes uh, on photos, texts, uh, and essays with uh, contemporary views. The layout is very simple and uh, sick. Uh, uh, there are special typefaces uh, for the titles, there are uh, rhythmical composition of uh, the photos of, for each project and that took place in the event. And uh, also there is a combination 
for uh, all uh, uh, the papers and two posters that are including in. These are the first pages with the sections. I don't know if you can see it clear, but uh, uh, the main point is that you know, on the arrows, I notice the sections. There are 11 sections. This is the interesting point and different from uh, the videos. Videos has the movie. Here are everything uh, as a photo. It's uh, steady. The first uh, section is walking narratives and there are uh, papers, crossing borders. Uh, there are papers and projects, walking and place, the boss art of walking, and uh, there are papers and projects, walking with objects, wanderings, exploring, long journeys, nature and uh, anthropocene, walking as a political narrative, and uh, of course, pedagogies of walking. These are the main sections, the main units that took place two years ago in PRESPA, in the certain place, all these projects. Uh, to have a view how it looks like, there are empty pages, free space, and round and round. It's not a typical layout, but uh, it's, um, it, it's trying to be familiar and readable. The special fonts for all the introductions, for the papers, not to be boring. And then all this rhythmical way that photos comes out to the projects. The projects had a lot of photos. Uh, I choose some samples to, to show because it's very interesting uh, for someone who hasn't touched it because you have to feel it, how it works, and uh, you need to be in peace to read it if uh, someone is uh, an expertise or an engineer or um, a scientist that looks, uh, is looking for something about uh, art and a special working rag art to find the answers if it's an artistic methodology or an art. This is another project that uh, comes out the paths in uh, a digital way. Another project uh, and performance that took place. Uh, this is dancing and uh, performance, the same time in the ancient ruins in Prespa. These are two projects as a sample of the book uh, for uh, um, sound workshops. That means that uh, video here it's uh, more impressive, and uh, you can follow. For us, uh, this is a proof signed by uh, cooperating organizations that uh, are international, not only the Greek uh, uh, university of uh, Western Macedonia, Department of Fine Arts and Applied Arts, like Milena, like um, Department of Fine Arts in Thessaloniki, in Athens, and a lot of other sponsors, like Polyprespa or the Regional Unit of Florina and uh, the Municipality of Prespa. It's a teamwork, I think so and um, someone needs time to follow up uh, this project. It's a volume that um, special uh, artists that were there uh, have to keep uh, in their memory and maybe in their home. Uh, I'm open for questions. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Aspasia. We have the book, we have the documentary, we have the films, the archive, and of course, definitely the memory of the event. And we can reflect uh, on that uh, in many ways, not only for what happened in Prespa, from those who have been there and how they see it now in uh, two years uh, later, but also for the, uh, a general uh, uh, conversation about the concept of recording, and about the concept of 
creating an, an archive of something or rather keeping it only in memory. First of all, uh, I think that uh, uh, the video registration that we saw, uh, and of which there is much more, uh, as we know, and the few screenshots of the book that we um, were presented by Aspasia, it all looks very good. So these are very beautiful ways in the, which uh, the walking art was documented in Prespes or in Prespa. Um, but this, first of all, presupposes the question uh, that uh, walking as an art form should be documented. And we heard at the start that Geert said that most of his walks are not documented. Um, so my, question, my first question then for Geert would be why? Uh, and what is the advantage for you in not documenting your work? Um, and then my second question is for any of you, uh, but uh, if anyone from the audience wants to chime in, I would also gladly hear, uh, be interested in hearing what they think of this. And that is the following. Uh, have you found, particularly with so many performances in PRESPA in 2019, that particular ways of documenting are better suited for particular types of performances? Mm -hmm. um, Babak, uh, just to give you a short answer about my personal practice, uh, which uh, may as well uh, connect with, for example, what Bob does as a performer. Um, my background is, um, is um, and already at a young age, I was confronted with the fact that um, the written language limited me to, to try to preserve, try to hold things. Uh, and uh, so I was uh, I studied music to become a better poet, um, in the, as well in the sense of uh, exploring a medium that is not uh, trying to uh, to, to, to preserve things, but that is happening in the here and now. Uh, and music is is, is emerging um, in, in the moment. So, um, and my um, then I came into contact with walking as an as an as an art form that reflected these uh, this approach uh, very much as well, because walking is in the moment, and uh, walking you, that you you do together with others. Um, as a form of gesture. But for me, writing uh, my art is much about gestures. And um, uh, any way by to materialize it um, would um, the, would not keep um, the essence of it again anymore. Uh, so I, pres I prefer to do my work um, the, with others um, uh, in groups. Uh, the, but without using any any way to um, uh, to document to register it beyond the body itself. Uh. Thanks. So may I paraphrase this? This totally sounds to me <laughs> like Plato's cave. That uh, <laughs> your walking is uh, the unique experience, and uh, the documentation is a kind of uh, Plato's cave where we're watching shadows on the wall uh, of uh, your walking. Um, yeah, the, <laughs> with the difference, yeah, of uh, course. Add to this. Uh, yes, yes. Yeah, go on. Sorry. <laughs> with the difference, of course, that uh, it was about, uh, uh, let's say, and um, uh, people being outside of the reality and uh, or being in, in an own reality. Well, well, in my work is it's exactly about being in a reality that cannot be grasped uh, because it's reality itself. It cannot be reproduced. It's unique. Anyway, I don't want to lead it too far, uh, the philosophically, or, or uh, the. We'll leave Plato uh, but, uh, in the past. Yes. But I understand. But uh, Karen Stender has a comment on this. Karen, do you want to ask her directly, or do you want me to read your question? I'll read your question. Uh, Karen is asking, uh, Geert, would you say is walking an experience? Mm -hmm. Well, um, uh, I always um, think about, about what uh, Hamish Fulton said when, when he was asked, uh, and this is very much uh, referring as well to the work of Christos, walking art uh, and his documentary, and, and the whole question that is driving uh, this documentary. Uh, the, when it was asked to Hamish Fulton, uh, um, why is, is your walk, why is uh, uh, a walk a work of art? And uh, he answered, uh, in the first place, it is a work of art because the artist says so. Uh, uh, the, if an artist says it's a work, a work of art, so it is. 
And secondly, it is because in my um, there's a, in the walks that you make together with me, uh, this you are walking like you are walking the first time in your life, like you experience something for the first time in your life. And um, I strongly uh, believe in that. That walking is one of the last, if not the last, um, the action uh, that is free of all consumism, from all uh, materialism, uh, that is completely being in the moment and being free. Uh, so um, that for me is the essence of walking. Thanks, and, Jess, uh, I think, wants to add to this. Mm -hmm. Uh, hi, hi everybody. I, I just wanted to say I completely agree with Geert. <laughs> okay. Oh, that's so there's there's two well of said. us. If you if you want to have an if you want to have a deeper discussion, it's probably for another time. But um, yes. yeah, I, I totally agree with 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 Geert that, that, that you know that's not to say that it shouldn't be documented, but uh, you know as I see myself as 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 Geert does as a walking artist. My walk is the art. That's my work, and the documentation is purely for the audience. I mean, as I in an interview with Christos a couple of years ago, I said, you know, it would be really great if I could get paid to do a walk, but I can't, so I have to sell photographs or do writing or whatever. You know. And the beauty of it is that you say that, uh, Jess, as a photographer who is working with like uh, the, yeah, the materializing uh, the, uh, the environment uh, on a, on the in an in an in an object in a photograph. Yeah, but that's a separate thing to the walk. Mm -hmm. mm. I understand. You can't I understand. I describe the walk. That, uh, can... Martin. Uh, has an interesting point to make in this respect, uh, and that is whether um, the uh, documentation is maybe not so much documentation, but a kind of translation into another medium. Martin, do you want to elaborate on this? Uh, yeah, I was. I, well, I suppose the, um, uh, the the question is when. Does documentation become something else? Is it always something else? Um, and is just pure documentation possible? Um, so, just to give an example of my own practice, um, everything I do is based around my own act of walking, um, an act of solitary walking. Um, and um, the document that I do is based around sound recording and poetry. And I would take both of those and move them into something that I would see as additional, uh, that would become works of art in their own right when I put them in installation, when I install the poetry. Um, and uh, I, I personally think that it's a, um, uh, a spectrum that, that um, uh, on the one hand, you have um, the works which um, are as here as described, and it will be perfectly possible to take things further than I take them. Uh, and so there is continuing process of translation. Uh, and I just uh, I see them as um, uh, uh, as complementary. Yeah, it becomes uh, broader than just the walking is uh, what you're uh, describing. Um, Bob, do you want to uh, add to this? Yes, I've got my own theory. Now I want to put it in context of Western art, and Suzanne is the main person here. Now, the Impressionist said everything is colour. So basically, you paint everything you see. So everything that you see is art because it's colour. Then the Symbolist said everything I think can be said. And so everything, every thought can be written or something. So uh, the Impressionist liberated looking 
and the uh, symbolist liberated thinking. Now, Cezanne brought those two processes together in his painting. Now, out of that, we had what developed as modernism. And Morris Dennis said, before a painting a, a nude, it's the flat surface covered in colors in a certain order. And so the mark then became the definition of what modern art was. That's the point in which visual art has uh, emerged. Now, I, as a performance artist, artist, would use the metaphor, if you see your fingertip and everything that comes from your fingertip as the mark, that is where it was at at the point of view of the mark. Now, for the performance artist, everything is from the fingertip backwards into the brain. So it's the whole human experience. This is what performance art, this is the, the canvas, if you like, of performance art, is the bit from the fingertip back into the whatever this me, me business is. The, 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 uh, and, and then uh, the, 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 then bringing the two together, why I see walking art as an evolution or what um, those two are morphed into, because if you see walking art as this process of seeing, and this person who not only sees, but thinks at the same time, is in movement. So that is being carried along in movement. That is the definition. Another way of putting it generally is moving art. And I applied for a, a grant as a moving artist, but it's different to that because moving art is more generalized. Walking art is directional. So it's within that tradition I see it. So it's work walking with consciousness. So I just want but to you're that describing the visualization as an integral part of this, right? So then uh, you recognize the performance as uh, being the art in its own right, but the documentation or the visualization as an integral aspect of the realization of um, uh, the performance art. Well, I haven't taken it to the, yet that stage, but the documentation, if you see the documentation of visual art as being the, the recording on a, a picture plane, if you see the um, a documentation of performance art as being, say, a movie or a video, uh, I would say uh, the documentation of walking art is a synthesis of the two. I mean, I can tell you what it is for me, but that's, you know, I can just go on, and, but that's the general principle. I know what it is for me, but I think it will be different for different people. This is what we're exploring now, the frontier of... Exactly. Yeah. Uh, but I would like to also, before we uh, continue with this discussion, it might be interesting to ask um, uh, Annie and Chris and Aspasia if they believe that certain types of performances that they um, worked with, uh, and Geert and, and Janis, of course, that they worked with in Prespes in 2019, whether certain types of performances are better documented in certain ways. Nobody knows. All the media mm. are, uh, um, have to be combined in a way. Uh, sometimes you have to notice uh, the sound, have, uh, sometimes you have to notice uh, the picture, and sometimes uh, nothing of them because it's a feeling and you can't transfer. Uh, I think uh, it depends uh, on what every uh, point of view has uh, uh, to look for it. For example, if you are a photographer, you have another point of view. If you are a performer, you, uh, you, are, you have uh, a different point of view. And, you, and uh, if you are a worker, because uh, there were persons that uh, Font of these uh, projects and follow somehow uh, some um, projects. Um, they said that uh, they like all this thing and uh, psychologically uh, they have some a few days for resting and uh, uh, they have used nothing, either photo, either smartphone, nothing. So, according to my research, uh, I noticed that um, I, uh, we can't answer to this question definitely, or to, to take uh, um, the opportunity to say it's uh, whatever everyone can uh, feel and can keep in his memory. This is history, it's memory, and uh, um, you have to live it. 
Yeah, thank you, Espacia. Yeah, I see that, uh, yeah, that Laura and uh, Sarah have something to add from their own perspective. But as well, I wanted actually to refer to Laura because for me, the project that Laura did, um, and which I would like to ask her to explain, of course, uh, in PRESPA, uh, was specifically interesting because um, it was impossible to, um, uh, to document because it was made by the people walking it and uh, so, um, uh, Lorda, could you tell a bit about, about your uh, your work and uh, about the relation of documenting it? Good to see you all. Um, thank Hi, you uh, for asking, and thanks everyone for these these ideas. But it is true that I um, you know, my work is it, it emerged from being a, a teacher of of kids in cities who are brown, black, immigrant. Um, indigenous, and my work does tend to be sort of um, a walk in a small space, a long walk in a small space where um, a labyrinth or a sort of choreographed sort of bunch of lines are crafted on a, a surface. We etch a space that we then walk in. And again, it came from children's play, children liking to make mazes on pavement when they were bored and they had no toys. There's no budget for, you know, art experiences. So with chalk and hot pavement, we used to draw maps and mazes um, to walk. Um, and so my work obviously now has emerged to being sort of a grown-up version of that. And I walk in large, multi-mile multi places where I scratch sort of the surface, sort of Richard Long, but... I don't uh, do it over days, I do it over a few hours. Um, and I, ultimately, a drawing is created by my walking, either by my feet, my feet with snowshoes in snow, um, by using a tool such as a rake or a stick. Uh, cultivating Cultivators is what I call them because they cultivate um, conversations and engagement, but they are very rarely done in the art world. And if I look at our faces today, I feel like obviously this is an art world conversation. And I'm sure that you all must do some version of your walking where it's not so Euro white sort of uh, refined. <laughs> My work tends to often not fit into these conversations because it feels like it's sort of outside of the art world. It's happening in publics where I don't invite people. It's just, it's people who are afraid of coming to art worlds. And so I am often concerned when I participate in these conversations that I'm somehow giving up a little bit of the, the critical uh, sort of uh, the critical mind or the critical voice that I think we should have. Thank you for asking. Thank you, uh, Laura. Uh, Sarah, you wanted to, to add something um, to a uh, female point of view? Um, yes, no, thank you. I mean, it's not it's not particularly from a female perspective, it just happens, but uh, I thought it was also a good point. Um, um, I, just to answer the question of whether, um, you know, was the, whether we should document it or not. So the, the work I do is very anchored in shining a light on a socio-political aspect. Um, so, for example, at the moment, I'm creating a work which is about shining a light on the fact that a lot of ancient, ancient um, horse paths that you could use horse riding in England are threatened to disappear by 2026. So there's the walk itself that I do, uh, which is a political act of, you know, walking and on these unrecorded paths that are going to disappear from a map. Um, but then there's also the documentation of writing of this experience as um, a woman of colour walking by myself in a very white British countryside um, and, and recording that experience, which I think is, is, is interesting to share. Um, because of the rural space is, is seen as as belonging very much to 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 you know not belonging but you know I think a lot of people of color don't feel comfortable in the rural space 
Um, and then also I'm, I'm creating um, a map online which is accessible to all of all my of, of all my work and the reason I'm doing this is because I want to shine a light on the fact that these bridal ways are going to go extinct and I think it's a very important um, it's, a, it's something that's really important and that's really to kind of share share that message so it's not just the experience itself it's also sharing the message and making sure that I'm reaching a different audience my website is not published yet. It will be published hopefully this month, but I will share my Instagram page and then from there, there will be a post with my website. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I just wanted to uh, perhaps just bring us back to the experience of Press First because um, I think the two things we haven't mentioned, one is the absolutely amazing landscape and the effect that that had on the different uh, walks that we did and the different events. And um, also just seeing um, the clips today from the videos. Um, but in the workshops that we did, um, it was very much a sharing and being invited into somebody's practice. And, you know, I can remember how I felt, what, with that carrying uh, with Stefan and Anna Musbys, it was really, um, you know, it was a big thing to be part of and very, um, very touching. And it was lovely just to see the clip of it today. So I think that's something that we could perhaps um, just note that um, also as a, not also, but as a participant, what that gives you and also very much something to reflect um, back on as the days and months have, have gone since then. So two big things for me, the, the participation and the actual um, amazing place. That's it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, thank you much, Rosie. And, and uh, another thing that came into my mind is, especially in your work, uh, actually, the documenting of the work are the drawings you make um, or that you made uh, in Prespa uh, with a group of people and that are actually drawing us as, as big as the landscape, a bit as the, um, the, the carpet of the Chinese emperor that wanted an, uh, a map as big as his country. Uh, and uh, the document itself was was this amazing, big, large, uh, uh, long uh, drawing that was made on the bridge uh, towards Archeus, Archelaus uh, Island. And then uh, how do you feel about being this documented? Um, um, how do you relate to this? Does it make sense for you or not? Or, uh, the, how do you feel about uh, the, 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 uh, the whole process of, of the documents that are made uh, um, in video? Um, well, it's a kind of double thing, isn't it? Because there's the, um, well, it's three way. There's me wanting to invite people to that location and the experience of that with the water and the reeds. Then there's us making the long drawing together. And now there's the um, documentary that Stefan made um, of, of us doing it. So it's, um, yeah, no, I, I, it's, for me, it's like making something which initially is a, a private practice of me going there drawing and then, you know, it sort of ends up with something, um, you know, many stranded, multi stranded. And that's, um, you know, that, that's exciting and new. And, you know, from what for me starts off in a small book of my own, you know, to end up in this really, extensive piece. Maybe um, uh, Annie uh, or Chris, uh, to, to come back to the original question of Babak, uh, was there any walk um, that um, that for you was uh, the easier or even uh, the other side, uh, uh, the impossible to, to, uh, uh, to document? Do you have any examples of that? I believe that uh, it was many of uh, actions 
it was a really difficult to catch the moment. It was really difficult to catch the moment. This was uh, uh, my difficulty, and uh, I always try to find a solution. I always try to find a solution to every problem that I, I found in my way. But uh, I believe that in, uh, the crucial thing for me it was to not so not just only to to record all these uh, uh, actions of the artist, but also to uh, to share it with the uh, general public. I want to see if the if the people can uh, um, can uh, take something from this uh, documenting and uh, to use it as uh, a personal uh, walk and in, in general um, uh, life, you know, uh, use it uh, everyday life. So, um, yeah, I think it was uh, really this this one that it drives me in uh, again and again to find the one the the best angle of view to 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 try to decode this artistic practice, uh, but. Uh, uh, every project has uh, some uh, difficulties, uh, but I think uh, the most it was uh, yeah, normal one. Yeah, if, I don't know. It was uh, easily for me. For me, it was also uh, very anxious uh, to document it the way the artist wanted it uh, to be documented. If you know, I. Uh, also, I didn't want to, for me it was difficult because I didn't want to intrude uh, in any of the uh, things that were, ha that were happening at the moment and uh, maybe change some of them uh, by accident because of the camera being there. Um, now, also many people feel uh, very weird in front of the camera so i was wondering if any of the participants uh, would have an issue with that and fortunately we didn't have any issue but uh, sometimes immediately even uh, your the position of your body changes in front of your of a camera so that uh, was a thought of mine i was i was documenting the some of the workshops uh, practically uh, I think one of the workshop, work, workshop was very difficult to document it and it was uh, one of uh, Greg Lianis workshops. Um, Vasilis Joachimidis uh, tried to document it. They did a very, very hard walk. They reached the top of the mountain and uh, it was very... Uh, I think I have the... Ah, yes, we have uploaded it. And I think it was practical, but... Uh, it was an extreme experience and it was very difficult to really be there and do it and uh, record it all. Uh, I can share the link as well. If I, want, if I can add something. Yeah, I think mm -hmm. that uh, when we speak about uh, documenting, it will be something about uh, fragment. Of what stays from the past are always fragments anyway. This happens in all of these artifacts from history. Archaeologists know it very well. And it also happens for a contemporary event or even in our everyday life. How many of the things that we have seen today uh, shall we remember them? Probably none. But still uh, there is the aura of that. So no matter how, even if there was, let's say, the 100% recording of everything, still <laughs> there will be, most of the things will be missing. And I think that what is missing it is the unrecord is the non being possible to be recorded, so to say. So in a way, what we see in this effort is a, in a way it is a little bit desperate, <laughs> uh, but at the same time it is necessary because uh, it creates a tool of uh, something like a keyhole of remembering and, and, and a keyhole to what has existed. And uh, if uh, this works or not, uh, it is. Uh, in a way, it is uh, like in Greg Yannis, uh, as Annie says, I have not been in that walk. I learned about this walk when people returned uh, from that really exhausted, really exhausted. It was around like it reached the physical limits. But if you see the documentary, if you see the documentation, it's a very interesting example. 
it was uh, still uh, you have the feeling that these people were uh, experiencing something that was uh, beyond them so if there is a success in that beyond the, the, the I mean beyond the limits of their body because what we say are beautiful images so there was there was this uh, there is this contrast but this contrast exists exactly because in my memory I have the memory of that group returning after an eight-hour walk, totally exhausted. So the, for me, as a reader now, and as a person that remembers, and I think that this is what it is. It is a recording is also a part of the memory. It not, we cannot face it as something concrete that is there and that, that has an absolute. It's still also, it will always be also a fragment. I think, uh, Yannis, what you are touching on is um, um, the identification of who the chronicler is. Who is doing the recording? Is it uh, the performer himself or is it someone else who uh, is indeed documenting uh, the performance? Because then you're also talking about an interpretation like you uh, or this person seeing uh, all these people return from the walk. Um, they are, this person is interpreting the work. Whereas if the artist himself or herself is uh, uh, making a recording, then it becomes part of the performance arguably. If I can answer to that, uh, I, I did not record their return. I remember their return. So this is totally, I don't have a photo of them returning or a video. I remember them. So it's totally mnemonic. And uh, so and I, ha I have no, I had no experience of the, of the actual walk until one year later when I saw the film. So for me, the video. So there was this very nice, uh, the very interesting, let's say, transition from what I remember to, to what, in a way, was recorded. I will not say to something that really happened, so to say, because in, at the end, nothing really happens, <laughs> you know. <laughs> uh, uh, I, what we said in the preparatory meetings, uh, one of the things that has uh, helped, I think, this process is that the fact that all those who recorded were not even uh, students of, of uh, film, let's say. They were just uh, art students who had uh, very low of, or not, no experience in recording. So for them, it was, uh, I think that that has, uh, while uh, Annie, who is a filmmaker who has studied uh, uh, film, had that uh, drawback, so to say. For them, it was just uh, having a camera. So camera became something very, in a way, accidental, like uh, in New Realism with uh, Rossellini, with, uh, uh, where he was using uh, actual, uh, no, no uh, actors, but uh, regular people, no, no, no educated actors, so to say. So I think that this if is I what has, say... uh, yes. Uh, no, I'm sorry, I'm interrupting, but if, my, if I may say, like, if you, like children, if you give a camera to a child, they document it very instinctively, if you know what I mean. It was like a cinema verite, so to say. It was not, uh, it was not uh, staged at all. Uh, thank you, Yanis. Uh, to come back on an, uh, an earlier uh, question or, the, or like the comment of uh, Anna, uh, Anna Digero, um, who is um, asking the question, can the body be a documenting medium? Are there other um, methods to, uh, the, um, to document walking than technical uh, instruments? And, um, and then maybe I would like to add two things about an earlier uh, encounters we had in La Domieu in France, where um, the Rosie was as well, and uh, where uh, one of the works that represented uh, there was a silent walk, uh, getting lost with the group, and, uh, and this for uh, almost five hours, um, uh, walking without any direction, and, um, um, and uh, in, a, in a territory, in a terrain, because all the meetings we organize uh, uh, with uh, walking creative practitioners uh, are in places uh, that are abandoned, that are difficult to reach, uh, that are uh, unknown for people or you will not go to, normally will not go to, uh, the, if you don't have an, a reason to go to, like uh, an, an encounters with others uh, that are working in the same field uh, as you. 
the, just as an example, he walked uh, from Albania to Prespes. Other people uh, came by bus, other people were, had to travel 48 hours to get there, which is a very, very strong physical aspect. Uh, so you, uh, you are literally uh, doing a big effort to get there. And, uh, and for me, this is essential as well in, in, in the whole experience of walking, which cannot be documented uh, because it's part of your bodily experience. Uh, the, uh, and uh, to walk in silence with groups is for me another way of, of, of uh, the, um, to very intensely um, the, um, the opening yourself uh, for what is around you, becoming one with what is around you, using your body to to be the landscape. Uh, and um, uh, but uh, to come back to, to, to the topic, uh, can the body be a documenting medium? I remember from the previous meeting in La Dumieux, um, uh, with walking artists, that there was one one uh, walker, actually she was not even an artist, or who is not an artist, that, that's another question. Uh, she uh, she just came to, to walk and uh, every day of the encounters, uh, there were workshops, there were conferences, uh, and there was doing marvelous interviews and uh, the podcast, and we never saw her. We only saw her now and then when, we, when she was passing through. She left very early in the morning and came back very late in the evening. And so we only saw her or, or uh, going early or coming back. And, uh, she, uh, and while we were doing all these uh, walking activities, she was somewhere walking around us. And at the end of the encounters, she came to us very modestly. Uh, the uh, showing us what she had done, and actually we could see that she has registered, uh, documented on GPS all the walks she did in these uh, seven days of the encounters. And actually, she every day she had drawn an, uh, one leaf of a flower. So uh, at the whole, at the end of the walking encounters, she had drawn a flower around the place where we were uh, the, uh, all together. And, um, uh, and she had drawn to her body. So uh, I think uh, in the simplicity of what she has done, it has shown that uh, documenting can be in so many ways. I, said, I can add to that another experience from the encounters with the work of Rosie Monfort. Rosie, who mm -hmm. uh, did this performance, uh, this, it, is a, it is a performance in a way, yes, but it is also a painting work uh, that we saw in some of the a big uh, papyrus uh, a work, uh, a frieze, uh, like I think it is it was 10 meters long by 10. It was a painting that was done collectively and then it was exhibited and it was exhibited on the out uh, wall, protected, we thought, from the wind and that, uh, of, of a balcony of the museum where we were. But uh, the third or fourth day of the conference, of the exhibition, when the conference was over, there was a huge tempest that was totally unexpected, almost typhoon, that started from Prespa and ended up in Thessaloniki, something like 200 kilometers south uh, east. So her work, you can imagine this big strip of paper was rounded like that. And in a way, it incorporated uh, the suffering and not the suffering. It incorporated the trace of the event of the. So I think that this proves that even if a work has a concrete end, like a, a painting, let's say, it is still uh, uh, it, it is still it can still be imprinted on it uh, the traces of uh, of history of uh, the event of what happens. Mm -hmm. I'm very glad to hear that. Um... Uh, it's the first time I've heard that the ending. So I'm very glad that we've. Um... That we made this so uh, documentation, uh, and, and uh, okay. we, we, we have the yeah, work. No, I, I didn't know it ended like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yes, because maybe you initiated this big typhoon. You know, <laughs> that started. <laughs> it was not very often in Greece to have events like that in that time of the year. <laughs> so your work created a huge tempest that covered the whole north part of Greece. I think it was. Um, I think it was thirty meters long. It was very long, wasn't it? Yeah. Thank you. Uh, I think, I think yes, it was at least twenty, yeah. twenty-five. Yes, twenty. And maybe uh, Aspasia to come back to your uh, the, 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 uh, you. 
your challenge was to actually to take all these works and, and, and contributions of the artists and uh, uh, transform them into a book. It still was uh, this experience of, of, of being a work. How uh, that, uh, that I think you did, and that this was a very big challenge of you, and you, you found very creative answer on it uh, to um, transform all these works. Uh, the, that were made in Trespass into a book and still preserve the essence of working um, for the people that, that are um, uh, reading the book. Uh, so making the book as a book. Um, how did you perceive that? How, how did you... It's not my work, totally. Uh, my work is the design of the book and uh, I was concentrated how to um, to have the appearance of the book totally. Uh, mm. The most the, this is a teamwork. Teamwork means that there are a lot of people that organize the text. Other people organize photos, and Mr. Yogas combined everything. So I have finalized text and um, a lot of photos. Of course, uh, there is a big work to split everything to the right place uh, to see how it looks like because the first um, select collection it doesn't work all the time we have a lot of uh, teamwork with uh, Mr. Yogas and uh, we managed to have this final uh, appearance of the volume uh, but um, about the text uh, it was provided from uh, uh, the university from other people that uh, are inside their names. All uh, the organizing uh, group uh, have worked about this. I, I, we have work. to say now with Gert, I think some that was not mentioned. I, I only uh, that one of the main pro issues that we had with Gert in uh, editing the book was uh, with all this vast material whether we should have categories. If there will be categories, how will they be categorized? You remember, Gert, all these discussions that we had, and uh, how because there were there were there was a problem also about problem. There was an issue uh, with uh, artists that also presented papers. In some cases, they were relevant to the actual work. In some cases, they were not relevant. They were totally different. So we had to solve a number of problems. And I think that what we, we are proposing in our uh, book is a way of uh, reading or horizontally also these uh, workshop practices. And, uh, and we really needed to connect them to various aspects of uh, uh, art practices, not only particularly of watching, but in general as well. So if I can say that the, the main issue that we have to solve apart from, you know, the very painful editing and all that and bringing all that material together and finding, I, I don't want to, to even remember that was really very difficult, but the most challenging uh, as, uh, ideologically was when you have this vast material, how you present it. And I think that yeah, anyway, we ended up in choosing this uh, uh, by making so to say categories i know that the word category sometimes is a little bit difficult and uh, problematic in some cases but it was needed in order to have some general guidelines and also in a way we offered um, a horizontal reading of uh, the working practice in general because having let's say almost 70 papers and projects we really had the possibility to have at least not a, the full overview, but a very good overview of how working practice works. It's a teamwork. Mm. Uh, uh, nobody can can make it without the knowledge, uh, without uh, the specifications, and without knowing uh, what are uh, the papers, what are uh, the the projects. Of course, I was there. All the the more of you knows that uh, I follow the most of the projects, but. It is very, very, very difficult to remember or to organize. And uh, for a designer, um, it's a challenge to fit them to have the same value because they are very interesting, 
Uh, and I think uh, that uh, it's the first time that we have something like this in the, in the English language. I, don't, I, I haven't seen any proceedings in this way to have this appearance. Um, I, um, the, the question about how to connect a book or a written text with a book is something that is indeed uh, very, uh, that is, it's interesting concerning us a lot in, in PRESPA and um, uh, because um, especially now for the, for the, the, the edition that will come uh, in July, I just shared an open call so for everybody who wants to participate as an attendee or as an artist uh, or an, um, as a writer, uh, please feel free to have a look. Uh, we came up with an a big form of paper and um, and walk, uh, that is called an audio walk. Of course, you can participate with traditional papers and workshops and artistic walks as well. But an audio paper, as we invite um, uh, you to create, is actually a paper or an, a critical text uh, that you can listen to while walking and it actually um, only makes sense while you are in movement in a certain environment. So, um, uh, the, how can a, 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 a train of thoughts become a walk of thoughts? So, that, that, is, the, that is actually the challenge uh, we try to give uh, to the people that want to participate with an, what we call an audio paper. Um, and this sorts of mixed forms of documenting, presenting, uh, the um, uh, walking, um, and thoughts about walking, and, um, um, they, uh, just very much. How can, because, uh, since the, the, the Greek uh, peripatetic uh, school, well, philosophy was done while walking, uh, we cannot um, separate walking from thinking. And uh, this book tried to do this as well, to uh, to have this fluidity, that, that this intersection um, on 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 uh, an organic way. Um. I would love to uh, call out uh, Eleanor Bryce in mentioning uh, the project that she did in Brussels. Good evening, because I really liked that idea of walking the the person who walked flower petals on GPS, and it reminded me of some experiments i've been doing with um again with this question how to how to document walking so i i run and sort of gps was a bit of a reflex there but one thing i did here in brussels there's a river that runs underground through the city and there's no trace of it at all on the surface um so i did a walk using a map from 1837 that shows the route of the river uh and tracked myself on my phone. So it was sort of fascinating to be navigating using a paper map and then leaving a trace digitally at the same time. Um, I haven't sort of, I have the, like the, this, the actual, the map I was using and making notes on and uh, I took a wrong turn and sort of detoured and stuff. Um, but I haven't combined the, the two yet. Um, but it was I, what I'm, what I liked about that was using GPS to tell me where I had been rather than where I was. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. um, so often it's the other way around. Thanks. <laughs> Two things that I really like about uh, I, I presume it's that river in Brussels because um, there's I think only one major one that's uh, um, uh, hidden beneath the ground. The name is called the Zenne, as if it's like a cheap copy of the river in Paris. Uh, and um, they uh, 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 covered it because it stunk. It was an open sewer, right, uh, at the end of the 19th or the beginning of the 20th century. So instead of cleaning up the river, what they did was they just covered it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'm actually I'm doing a master's at Tilburg with the performing public space masters. Um, I'm looking at walking and the movement of water in public space. So this is one of my sort of experiments to do with that. But yeah, exactly. Um, it's, there is no trace whatsoever of it on the surface. They are opening it up in the north of the city, but in the center, it's, there's a, and there are still street names, like um, the sort of the big uh, Rue de la Grande Ile, so they're like the big island street, but there's no island. 
So I did a more there's performative a version island. of it recently. Sorry? Yeah. I was saying there's maybe a traffic island. What, what I also find interesting, if I remember it correctly for Brussels, is that the Zenna, the path of the Zenna is almost impossible to properly follow because there is no, there's not often not a road above it. It's built up, mm -hmm. right? Um, and why I think that's interesting is uh, I live in Sao Paulo, or I live just outside of Sao Paulo, but anyway, um, and Sao Paulo also has a lot of uh, rivers that are now underground that have been covered because um, uh, uh, the car is king and they needed the space to be able to drive. But here, very much so, all these uh, covered rivers uh, are now roads. So although most of, of Sao Paulo is built along a grid, the exception is exactly these rivers that are no longer there, but that are now meandering roads in between the grid. So it's very easy to recognize um, these covered up rivers here, as opposed to in Brussels. Yeah, it's the other thing that's really struck me is how the the uh, vocabulary, the water vocabulary is so often used in urban geography in terms of dynamics and flow and all that sort of thing. So um, I was really intrigued by, was it Martin right at the beginning of this cafe talking about his island experiments, because that's sort of where I'm going next in, in what I'm doing. Um, trying to map the city as a nautical chart is my next kind of uh, game. Um, yeah, it's it's fascinating. That sounds great. Um, I hope uh, I hope you document it. <laughs> <laughs> yes, me too. <laughs> yeah, it would be interesting to try and document the process of the mapping, actually. But maybe that's a bit too reflexive. <laughs> Um, well, actually, this is a perfect segue into something that I think Bob said. Uh, how do we document documenting? Through process. Now, what the um, mystery here isn't so much the mystery of documenting, it's the mystery of what is process. And I spent 30 years trying to unpick that. <laughs> I'm going to details. I, I haven't got a clue what it is, man. Does anybody know what process is? Yeah, would you like to react on that? Uh, what is process, man? What is process? Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> what is it? Process, process, I think, I believe I would say that it is a way. A way, both uh, literal way, a, a pathway, a street, a something. Uh, and a way, a manner, so to say. So it is the combination of these two things. It is to me, of course, yes. So it is one way, one thing is uh, something that will give. Uh, uh, it is both a technique and also a mental experience of uh, finalizing something or getting into somewhere. Okay. And how does the so. mental how does the mental technique act upon the act itself? What's that link? What's the link the between mental, thinking and the other words? You, you, you referred to Cezanne. I think that when Cezanne decided to start painting uh, while he was, uh, uh, how to say, he laid, he, he lied on the, on the, on the he changed the, his body uh, relation to the landscape. By staying, uh, uh, by staying on the on the, by laying on the on the surface of the ground, so that this is a process. And the the painting came later. So uh, the, the 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 idea, the mental was that uh, his decision to transfer his body from walking to stay, sitting like that. So the whole thing changed. And despite the fact that that's something that everyone is doing it, he was the first who did it artistically. So this is the mental part. He, that's the, 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 the difference. And then the technique was that all the lines that he had, instead of being vertical, they became curved, so to say. So everybody was saying that Senna uh, cannot draw straight lines, so to say, in a way. And all the, the, his buildings are bending, but it was not because of that, of course. So I think that more or less, yeah. This is the, so in that I, I bring that as an example because you refer to Cezanne, which of course is 
a very important uh, point of reference anyway. But in this case, it is exactly that. It is a decision that you make and then the outcome that you create. Yeah. So this uh, well, thing is the policy. Yeah. Well, so Sam was the first artist to look at something and then spend a half hour before he made his brush smoke. So a lot of it existed within him. Now, this is what I would call the spiritual. And this is what Kandinsky would call the how. And I think that that's what what discussion is is when the spiritual comes in it's very very controversial i know and i i you know 20 years ago you couldn't even use the word because you get slammed out but i think this is what this is the element that's being brought in um the spiritual element spiritual dimension let me put it that way yeah. now if i can can add to that um uh, the, and, and referring as well to the ideas of Lucius Burkhardt, which may be known by, by, by some of you, Lucius Burkhardt, who was the inventor of the Patsirgangwissenschaft, or the science of walking, uh, he said that the landscape was made by walking. Actually, the landscape does not exist before you walk it. And um, making the, the thing the subjective and the objective actually together. Uh, the walking is, an, is, is in essence and uh, a mind walk uh, uh, the, because you create a landscape in the mind uh, and by creating the mind uh, um, it becomes real by being inside it by being by being in it of course and you cannot do this alone you have to do this with others together because the landscape is made through communication communication not only as an as a form of um, uh, the um, in the traditional way of 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 uh, of, um, of talking, uh, changing ideas, but as well as a form of participating and being together, being together and being the landscape as well at the same time. So this this is another word. It's it's a very spiritual uh, way of being, and that's why for me walking in silence is so important. Uh, uh, it's a form of uh, being together. In the most intense way, and being being the landscape itself. Well, uh, the, the, the Aborigines said that the, the act of being in landscape is the magical act of transforming or bringing the land to life. So they see that as the process of actually being there, of of mm -hmm. animating the land, and there's a direct relationship which bears that out and introduces it into another culture. Does anybody feel like throwing in? A last comment, feedback, or question uh, before I think many of you um, need uh, will need to go soon. But doesn't doesn't have to stop you to stay. We are here uh, to talk as long as you want. But for the people that uh, feel the urge to go and still want to say something or share something, uh, here's your moment. Maybe I want to say something about the collective uh, mind and how it can also document uh, the walk. So uh, if I walk and um, often I would go with a participant and the documentation of the walk is created by me and the participant. So also the work will, the, the walk as a work won't be made just by me, but just by me and the participant. So it's also a collective thing and it's not just my work. So there's a collective memory of that walk, and that is a documentation in itself already. And that's a really important part of uh, of it for me. That was a very interesting point, this idea of you are alone while you walk, but at the same time you have this feeling of collectiveness. And I think that this has not to do with the crowds, so to say, that are around you, but uh, with uh, uh, what uh, Bob said before about this spirituality of feeling that you are also uh, discussing or having an in, uh, or uh, contemplating with other people who are not visible, they are not, but they are there, so to say, in one way or another. And, uh, exactly. The, I did a project uh, once with a Puerto Rican dancer uh, in New York. Um, uh, actually, we decided uh, to. Uh, to perform together um, uh, every time in the same city, but um, never knowing in advance um, that we would be in the same city. So we, we kept it completely to the, to the coincidence, uh, to the chance uh, the, to um, 
uh, to meet and, and, and then a fee met, uh, we performed. And it actually, it happened that six times we were in the same city, same city at the same moment, uh, the, without knowing it in advance. And six times we made a walk together. Actually, it was always a walk towards each other. Uh, the, and, uh, but as well walking with people that were not there. Uh, the, the, uh, and I think you are um, as much walking with people that are not there, but that are with you are in spirit or in mind, um, uh, to which you reach out, uh, the, to which you connect, uh, then uh, on, a, on a beyond the material, uh, physical manner, then um, um, with the people that are around you. And that's why we also uh, that, that started with uh, made of thing uh, encounters and eventually in the, comp in the collaboration with Visual Master Plespers, because it's all about walking together. And not only walking together with the people that, that, that are there, but as well connecting very much with the past and with the people that were there and, uh, and even will be there. So, um, there is no walking alone. Yeah. I've got one other thing to say. Yes, I, I want to add you. <laughs> ah, Bob, okay. Yeah, please, Bob. Uh, the, go. Okay, okay. It's Martha Graham. It's the idea of synchronicity. What we did at art school was we walked at unrelated speeds, not half the speed, but unrelated speeds. And there's a moment when all the unrelated speeds come together. It's a Jungian concept, and it's a syncretic moment. And that's what she used in her dance companies, this syncretism, animated the whole thing and gave it a resonance. So it's to do with the unrelated rhythms and bringing them together in the process of walking or movement. That's the, another, that's another aspect along, another way of expressing it. And John Cage obviously worked with that in indeterminacy. Yes, I have to say that one of the words, uh, uh, one of the words that came, you know, every time that we got, go involved in something, we learn new words. The new word that I learned was the word Dadiri from the essay of uh, Tracy Benson, which is in our uh, text, and it is an Aboriginal word for, uh, that refers to from a nation, I don't remember the name of the nation that used them. And uh, it is about this feeling of uh, becoming one with the landscape. and. Uh, the, you walk in the landscape and you become one with it. So say, your body, your spirit, your narration, and all that. And it was really, you know, it is a very interesting contribution, you know, to, to add this word in the, uh, even in our vo vocabulary as walkers, that what we do is a dadiri. You can read in, 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 in one of the Aboriginal languages, the word for with the bark of the tree and the skin on our body is the same word. There is a question about um, uh, the using GPS um, to document walking, and um, I know that since the let's say the uh, invention of the GPS in the late 90s, artists are using this medium already uh, to um, or to let's say very fanatically to record every movement they make. There was an uh, artist couple in Berlin, uh, I forgot now, um, but I, I, I'll come back, um, that um, for years, uh, I think for more than 10 years, uh, they recorded every, every, every step they made uh, the, um, and um, every trip they made uh, the, uh, with GPS and mapped this out in the um, world. So, uh, of course, uh, others have used it uh, on in simpler ways, or to draw in the landscape, or to document, or to, to let people uh, uh, to, um, uh, to walk in their steps by, by making locative media works. Uh, so um, if anybody if you is using this, uh, please. I use GPS for all my work. Um, I've used it in several ways. I've used it with another artist who did um, a great work called GPS Embroidery, um, uh, which is about, um, I guess, looking at the female of experience of, of, of landscape, of experiencing the landscape, um, and the specific artwork that she was creating 
um, was about the mater maternal experience. Um, and what we did is we, um, we embroidered in the landscape through our GPS, our walks, um, which was writing a sentence on that landscape. Um, and she, I'll send you the link afterwards. She, she exhibits all the, um, all the sentences, all the embroidered words that have been inscribed in several places um, in the landscape. And that's that's a really interesting work that I've um, participated in. Um, and in the current work that I'm doing, I am using GPS um, to record my work because um, because I use it as mapping the unrecorded. Um, so in this specific work that I'm doing, um, I'm talking about places past that physically exist, but that don't exist on the physical map of the original map in the UK. Um, and so I'm recording these walks because I'm creating an, an alternative map, essentially. And so I use, I use GPS apps to do that. Wonderful. Actually, I uh, just remember the name of the artist I was talking about who fanatically um, recorded all his walks for almost 10 years, and it was Daniel Belasco Rogers. His, uh, let's say, his collective with his um, uh, his wife uh, was called Plan B. Uh, and, uh, really worth to check out uh, in the early years of, uh, of uh, GPS. And uh, very nice as well, the uh, association between embroidery and, uh, and using GPS. And of course, it's a sort of thing. You the GPS allows you to create while you are uh, create a walk uh, while you are walking it. It, it, it. You cannot make it in advance. It's made by uh, the movement of your body. Uh, the anybody wants a last word? Oh, I've got one last word. I'm sorry to keep on coming in, but it's uh, Suzanne again, and the idea of aerial perspective. So Alberti's method of, of linear perspective that, that transformed the, the Renaissance, Suzanne used aerial perspective, and it, as it's to do with the way that the atmosphere alters the, the, the appearance of distance. Walking, you can very much, it, it's a tool, just as I think uh, a visual perspective was a tool that we could use on a picture plane. I think aerial perspective has a potential in the process of walking. Oh, sorry about the clock. You could go on uh, and on. I, I remember an artist who used it, for example, drones. Uh, uh, not in the specific to uh, to, the, to document his work from an area's perspective. But actually, he walked with drones, drones next to the, next to him. And um, while the drone was documenting the walk, and he was experiencing the walk, looking uh, at of surveillance and uh, uh, and borders. Uh, so, um, uh, which is another medium that that gives a uh, very interesting a new uh, uh, um, uh, technology uh, to uh, document walking. I think we are coming to the end of our uh, conversation, and it may time to process all these wonderful ideas that uh, uh, that uh, were brought in by you and uh, by Annie, uh, Chris, Aspasia. And, uh, and Yanis. Um, would you like to add something, uh, Yanis, uh, Annie, Christos? Yes, no, I would, uh, first, uh, as for myself, I would like to thank uh, all those who were here this very nice uh, meeting. I don't know, it is morning, day. Here in Greece, it is night, it is 11 o'clock at night. Of mm -hmm. course, we always thank Babak for this wonderful platform that he has created and is bringing us together. And uh, well, we will meet again anyway. <laughs> this is almost inevitable. Thank you very much. I would like to thank you all of you too, uh, Papa Kurt and uh, all uh, the artists and all the people that are listening to us this night. And uh, I hope to you. I hope to see you.
as soon as possible in the next coffee break. Thank you very much. <laughs> Uh, Geert, Annie, or Chris, uh, do you want to add something before we sign off? I just to oh, say okay. thank you. Oh, sorry, the phrase we are talking together. No, okay. So, yeah. um, <laughs> thank you everyone for listening and uh, participating to the conversation, and uh, hope to see you in Presbyterian as well. Thank you all, also for me. And uh, I think we we're gonna meet in the press space. Have a wonderful uh, evening or rest of the day, whatever you may be in the world. And uh, thank you again uh, for being here.